Discussing weight can be a very sensitive subject for many people, especially for young girls. Uh, one columnist in the UK says that parents should do their chubby daughters a favour and tell them they are fat. Monica Grenfell says it's important to teach children that overindulging has dire consequences and claims fears that parents will turn their kids into anorexics if they criticise them. Well, she said that's nonsense. To discuss this this morning, delighted to have uh, with us uh, commentators Tracy Spicer and Danielle Miller. Ladies, good morning to you. Good morning to you. Okay, first to you, Danielle. Um, you're a bit of a specialist in terms mm. of uh, kids' affairs. Telling your chubby daughter she's fat, your response? Awful. Just awful. I mean, look, it is important that we teach all of our young people balance and to have a healthy diet, but labelling like that, them like that just isn't helpful. The research clearly shows that that blaming and shaming is only going to contribute to feelings of guilt that can exasperate overeating. We also know that whilst um, it, it may not necessarily re lead to things like anorexia, we do have a generation of young people that are absolutely incredibly anxious around body image. It's a huge mm. concern. And in fact, what we really need to be doing is encouraging them to have a stronger sense of self, a stronger resilience. They're going to be told by a million marketers that they need to change. They don't need to be told that by mum and dad as mm. well. But when can you afford to be honest? I also think labelling terms like fat and chubby isn't healthy. Mm. I mean, what you need to say, you know, if you're concerned about your daughter being overweight, is to get her exercising, to feed her better foods, to provide balance and to provide a good example for her as well. You mm -hmm. don't want to be setting up that yo-yo pattern of dieting that we know is incredibly unhealthy mm -hmm. and doesn't work. Tracy, what's your view? I have a slightly different take on this to Danielle. I don't think blaming or shaming helps mm. at all. But I think we need to move fat away from being an F word that we never talk about. I think mm. we need to discuss it with our children and we need to say things like, if you eat healthy food, then you won't be overweight. And I also think that parents are to blame. I mean, the parents are the ones who are making their children fat. Mm. And it's akin to child abuse to be fattening up your child and then having a go at them about it. The parents mm. are the ones who are responsible. This uh, woman in the UK says, I fail to buy it to the myth that today's girls feel pressured into being thin. On the contrary, we're constantly assured that um, curves are sexy and that the average British woman is now buxom size 16. Now her thin friends feel marginalised. I think that's absurd. I mean, <laughs> we see more thin images on television and in magazines. Yeah, but than in reality, I, it's, it just sort of, I think the reality is heavy rather than thin. Um, having just been in Britain, obesity over there is extraordinary. But then you get into Europe and they still eat well. They've got cake shops on every corner. They eat buck some food. But they're a lot thinner in Europe than they are in Britain. Why? Well, there's less fast food outlets in mm -hmm. Europe. You don't see McDonald's on every corner. You don't see all those ads for fast food. Mm. And, and also, the reasons why people are overweight are incredibly complex. It isn't necessarily because they're always eating incredibly bad foods all the time. It can be genetic. It can be socioeconomic. The other thing that, you know, the point that she made that young people are always encouraged to think that curves are beautiful, it's just not true. I mean, if you look at the net definition of beauty that the media feeds us constantly. Mm. It's this incredibly narrow definition. Mm. We can probably identify on one hand the women who don't fit that particular mould. You've got women like Oprah and Christina Hendricks who are gorgeous, curvaceous women but they are actually always pointed out as being curvaceous women. They are never really recognised simply for their talents and gifts. Oprah's broken a lot of moulds because she mm. is very much a, a powerful woman as well as a woman who, who doesn't fit that conventional thin size but of beauty. that said, there is no question and statistics again say if you are thinner you live a longer healthier life I mean not uh, necessarily so body body size isn't necessarily an indication of good health and I mean mm. we know that in this country eating disorders are absolutely on the increase and even more frighteningly Carrie Ann mm. We're seeing them start at a younger and younger age. So we've got girls as young as seven and eight hospitalised in this country with eating disorders. We don't want to be bringing up a generation of girls who think that the only way to be happy is to be thin and hot. But now we've got government departments actually throwing money for people to go to clinics to lose weight. I mean, there's more obese people than there are people thin people and people with those, uh, those eating disorders, mm. would you agree? I think it's important to get to the root of obesity and a lot of it uh, is an emotional issue, it's mm. not necessarily just, just overeating for the sake yeah, of it. Yeah, it is mm. very, very emotional. Mm. Food um, is, is all tied up with that and just plain bad habits. Yeah, it's an addiction. Mm. Absolutely. You interestingly wrote about the, the new television show Mike and Molly 
Um, and of course, for the first time uh, in television, other than Roseanne Barr and her show Roseanne, mm. we've got a couple of people on there who are just having a ball being, you know, being chubby people having a good time. That's right. I think it's a breakthrough. We tend mm. to have fat people on the telly when we want them to lose weight, like shows like The Biggest Loser. Mm. I think this show is phenomenal because we see the complexity of big people. We don't often see big people kissing on television or seeing all the different nuances mm. of their lives. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Mm. Yeah, I agree. And I think it is really important that we offer diversity because mm. we are a diverse nation of people. Mm. Body size isn't necessarily an indication of good health or emotional health either. Yeah, I'm not completely convinced <laughs> with that, Danielle. Um, mm. I think the, the health issue should always be tied up with, with size. And I think obesity is going to be one of the, the epidemic mm. issues along with diabetes uh, in this country in the next 20 years. Mm. Um, well, girls, thank you very much for your time this morning. Tracy, Thanks for Danielle, us. appreciate it. Thank okay, you. we've got more coming up. A guide on how to de-stress and unwind. But first, here's something for you.